Good day everyone, this is Lonix and we'll be talking about the fish pond in Stardew Valley. So if you're wondering what fish is the best to raise, then this video is right for you. Shake, shake. The fish pond is a type of farm building where you can raise fish and harvest their products. It provides lots of benefits, primarily in terms of profit, but also different kinds of fish produce different items, some of which are difficult to acquire. How so? We'll talk more about it later. Fishes multiply over time. More specifically, you can have a maximum of 10 fish after putting only one fish in your fish pond. This is pretty convenient when it comes to cooking due to the fact that most foods with healthful bobs use fish as an ingredient and you don't have to fish for them every time you need them. Of course, you need to fish them from the fish pond, but what if you need a fish that is currently out of season? Fishes on the fish pond last all year long, unless you remove them. In my case, I always use Lucky Lunch for additional luck before entering the Skull Cavern, so having a pond of sea cucumbers provides me a continuous supply of the ingredient. Take note that each pond houses only one type of fish at a time. You populate a pond by clicking the fish pond while holding a fish. If you want to change the fish, you will need to click the empty pond option, but before that, you might want to collect first the remaining fishes. You do this by fishing on the pond and the fish will be caught automatically without the mini game. All fishes caught are of regular quality despite of initially putting a quality fish. No bait or tackle will be consumed, nor you will gain any fishing experience. The first and most profitable fish would be the sturgeon. They produced sturgeon roe which, if placed on a preserved jar, will be turned into caviar after at least 4 days. One caviar is worth 500 gold, 700 gold if you chose the artisan profession. Moreover, the sturgeon roe is the only roe that can be turned into caviar. All the others will be turned into a roe. Next is the rainbow trout. Their products include roe, rainbow shell, and most importantly, prismatic shard. This is the reason why the rainbow trout is one of the best fish to raise in the fishing pond. Even if the chances for producing a prismatic shard are slim, it is much better than having none at all. Next is the lava eel. Lava eels produce convenient items such as spicy eels, which is a good food to bring in the skull caverns, and magma geodes, which are very helpful in completing the museum collection quest. They also produce roe and golden ores. Lava eels can be caught at level 100 in the local mines. Moreover, they are difficult to catch, so if you caught one, save it to put in your pond. Similarly, the stonefish and ice pit, which can be caught in the local mines at level 20 and level 60 respectively, also produce convenient items. Stonefish produces stones, copper ores, and geodes. The ice pit produces frozen tears, iron ores, and frozen geodes. Both also produce row and diamond. Since I've mentioned the museum collection quest, you might want to try raising octopus as they produce one up to a maximum of 10 omni geodes. Of course, they also produce row. Next on the list are the fishes caught on the night market. The blob fish may produce a pearl which can be sold at 2,500 gold. One pearl can be acquired after completing the quest at the mermaid boat. Other than that, pearls are hard to obtain. I personally think that they are a rare item. Fortunately, pearls don't have a major use.
Lovefish also produce straw and farm warp totems. The spookfish produces treasure chests that can be sold at 5,000 gold. If not, they produce straw. The midnight squid, though not necessarily one of the best fish to raise, produces squid ink which is used as an ingredient for sea foam pudding and squid ink ravioli. You can also acquire squid ink from the common squid and a drop from the enemy known as squid kid. I included this one due to the fact that squid ink can only be acquired from anything squiddy. Whatever. Next is Void Salmon. Caught on the witch's swamp, Void Salmon produces raw, void essence, and void egg. Void essence is an ingredient for crafting Mega Bomb and Iridium Band, both of which are beneficial in terms of mining and combat. It might help in your preparation to enter the Skull Caber. Next is Super Cucumber. Super Cucumber produces raw, amethyst, and iridium ore. It is one of the most convenient way to acquire iridium ore in the early to mid game, other than entering the skull caverns and breaking iridium nodes, or waiting for at least 4 years to acquire the statue of perfection. For the post 1.5 update, two of the three additional fishes, namely the blue discus and the stingray, are also one of the best fishes to raise. The blue discus, which is caught on the western part of Ginger Island, produces roe, banana, and golden coconut. Banana is a part of that one golden walnut quest wherein you need to place one on the altar just below Leo's house. A gorilla will appear and will give you golden walnut in exchange for the banana. You'll also be able to acquire one golden walnut after breaking your first golden coconut. Additionally, you can only acquire banana and mango sapling from golden coconut. Using blue discus to farm golden coconuts is one way. The stingray, which is caught at the southern part of the ginger island, produces row and battery pack. They also produce magma cap and cinder shards, which are a trading currency in the trading stall at Ginger Island. Additionally, cinder shards are primarily used in the forge at the Volcano Dungeon. So if you are planning to upgrade your weapons and tools or etc., you might want to put Stingray in your pond. Moving on to another related topic. If you are planning to use the pond as decoration, did you know that certain types of fishes change the color of the water? Lava eel turns the water to red, super cucumber to purple, void salmon to dark purple, and slime jack to green. You can also put signs or the sign of the vessel on fish pond to show the type and the number of fish it houses. Moreover, there is an option to change the decoration around the fish pond, so you might want to check that out. Other notes to consider is that after raising a pond full of 10 crabs, Willy will give you a pearl as a special gift if you talk to him. That is all for the discussion about the fish ponds. You guys, I wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you. I cannot say thank you enough. I love you guys. Be safe.